Hi everyone, my name is Eben. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hallett Park Zoo. Um, welcome to the Asian area of the zoo, which is the completely something different than I promised that I was going to do. I was going to say, but Eben, <laughs> I thought we were going to look at elephants or something, I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we, we, we aren't. Um, and also, the person I was going to record with is busy. Uh, they can't record with us right now. But even I thought you were going to ditch me for a cool person. <laughs> no, I ditched you for St. Reginald. <laughs> no, I ditched you. <laughs> Watch the video of St. Reginald for more context. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, welcome to the Asian area of the zoo. First of all, again, thank you so much for your reactions to the last video. That was, again, really, really cool to see. Um, but there was something that Goron said in the last episode that um, really stuck with me. Uh, you called the uh, African village generic. Um, and mm -hmm. I actually appreciated that together with a comment by um, someone else. And I completely forgot who it was. I actually looked it up before we started recording and then we recorded St. Reginald. Um, mm, and now I completely him. forgot. <laughs> um, but yeah, someone else said that the, the African village reminded them of a zoo and it, it gave them a very nostalgic feeling. And that kind of influenced the direction of the zoo because I want to go for a very generic zoo-like theming. Um, and this yeah, is to really give that zoo vibe to people. Yes, exactly. Um, and we're starting thing. in the Asian uh, area. Um, I still need to do a few things. As always, this Hello Park is always going to be like, it is finished ish. Uh, you already know it by now. Uh, but this is one of the first exhibits, mm. which is the Otter and Babi Rusa exhibit. Which That's I'm a mix I've never sure. heard of. I love it. It's a mix that's apparently possible because there is a, a document that somewhere mm -hmm. that mentions that these two can be combined, um, yeah. which I think is really, really cool. Um, I think otters go with a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, there is uh, a cable, uh, an electric mm, cable here. Makes sense. Um, because even with glass, they do it. Uh, we've seen it in every zoo we've been to together. Um, so I decided to add that in. Um, one of the things that I found that I wanted to do that I think is, is quite important is give the Babirusa enough shade um, because of their skin, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I made sure that there are enough trees. And I think the goal will be to have a um, an uh, Indian rhino behind this. Mm -hmm. um, because again, this entire zoo is going to be about uh, views that uh, stretch on. And if we're lucky, Ooh, very nice. This view stretches on quite far along. That's great. Uh, just just an intermediate uh, thingy over here. Those ropes, is that is that the African rope? Uh, yes. Oh, I was thinking it was the new rough ropes. And I was like, how did you bend them that way? No, it's the African yeah. one. <laughs> we have a lot of ropes nowadays. You colored them so perfectly. They blend them. Uh, thank you. Amazingly. Um, so first off, to your left and to your right, there's stuff to see. But the one that the thing that draws you in yeah. is the uh, gibbons, and I'm going, I'm backing away again because I want to show how, if people aren't walking right in front of it, <laughs> how from afar it looks as if it all continues. Yeah, I didn't even um, notice the glass until we walked up to it. That's exactly, really cool. and that's exactly the the, uh, the thing that I wanted. Because if we get even closer, oh, there's, there's even a moat. There's a moat and all between. That's really nice. Very the, cool. The moat is about as wide as it, as it is in uh, Dierenreik, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, in Planet Zoo scale, that does seem a little bit smaller. Than, um, I mean, gibbons are tiny. Like, look at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was something that I was very that I was stressing about um, because I was like, oh, is this going to be? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be enough space for them? But yeah, they are so tiny that it it does make yeah. it easy. When I when I put them down for the first time, I I was really surprised at how small they were. And I was like, this isn't right. But yeah, no, I uh, I just didn't see them very often and I, I guess I always just imagine them bigger or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, by the way, I love the way the decals on the pillars like 
the the cracks and things look so good I, like it almost looks like it's just part of the piece but i'm pretty sure yeah. it isn't it isn't exactly it is oh wow well. such a good job <laughs> uh yeah so um we also have a small uh, education area i wish i didn't have to do these little steps oh, they yeah. are part of um what this uh this yeah, piece is mm -hmm. um and one of the things that I also wanted to do, because um, this is probably the second area you'll you'll go into, or the first one, depending on what you do. But I think the African area draws you in much more. Um, mm -hmm. So once you get to here, you probably are thirsty and are hungry. And I think that's something that I want to do with every new themed area, at least give um, some easy, quick way of having a snack right before you um, continue in the new area. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's also this uh, semi backstage view for the otters and the babirusa, especially because you can't see the babirusa up close that much in the other viewing area. So that made me want to go and uh, make me want to do a small viewing area here what as well. Those, what are those lines on the? Uh, those are the. Uh, it's the. It's the. Um, the thing, the, the <laughs> it's thing. one of it's it's one of the you have the hay uh, sleeping. Oh, thing. it's the the jetty. It's a jetty. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. didn't want to sink it in completely because I did like the planks mm -hmm. sticking out a bit, um, because it gives that stripe texture. Yeah, um, yeah. It yeah. almost to me it almost looked like like something was like dragged across the floor or something. Yeah, yeah. That, that kind of that's kind of the feeling I got from it. And cool. I think it's gonna be really cool once you can see like. I, I want to do a combination exhibit again for the uh, Indian Rhino. We've been to uh, Deer and Dick and yeah, saw yeah. a really cool combination exhibit. So mm -hmm. I'm most likely going to be, do be doing that. And I think it's going to be really cool to see like, um, yeah, like Nil guy or, or an mm -hmm. Indian Rhino walk by in the distance yeah. when you have this viewing area. So that's going to be really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But yeah, let's continue. You keep checking to see if they're swinging or not. <laughs> but they're not swinging. <laughs> and let's continue this way. So now we're going to go to an area that's less finished, um, but I still like it. Um, and at the end, we're going to do another zoo science thing because that's something that I'll probably do with every episode um, because I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here you get the secondary view of the gibbons. Very cool. Which puts you more on eye level with them. Oh yeah, right. That's cool. Than the other side, which I also wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also this exhibit with uh, Hanuman uh, langurs or gray langurs. Mm -hmm. And I hope they're going to do the thing. I don't think they will. Um, did you do another clever, clever boy trick? There's a um, there's a drinking uh, fountain oh, inside right, yeah, of that. Oh right, yeah, you posted the screenshot of that. Yeah, that was yeah, really cool. and they they actually drink out of it, which it looks extremely cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also looking for the other animal in this exhibit, and I can't seem to find him. Oh, he's where he's all, he always is. There's oh, a sloth bear over right. there, <laughs> looking at absolutely nothing because yeah, that's I was, I was trying part. to go back in my memory. It's like I've seen the picture of the other animal. What was it again? What was it again? <laughs> I'll I'll get out of uh, explore camp for a hot minute. Yeah, mm. here is the sloth bear. <laughs> oh, oh man, that is such an awesome yeah. mod. Oh, I thought that was fixed. No, no, he's just sticking out his tongue sometimes. He doesn't stick it out. Oh, okay. Out. Am I selecting something? Yes, I am. <laughs> I think he's uh, stuck. <laughs> I don't know if he is, because he can get out whenever he wants to. He just doesn't. I think he's a different do. kind of stuck. <laughs> I also oh, this have... Looks, this looks great, man. I also have... Where the hell is he? He... This, this exhibit obviously isn't finished. <laughs> really? But, uh, I, I was just about a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh, there you are. Oh, he's escaped. Careful. 
And I'll put you here for a minute. Because then, if everything goes well... Is there going to be water in that mode? Because otherwise, I do not see how that... Is There's safe. water in this mode. No, the, the tiger mode. Oh, no, no, no. I'll show you. But that yeah. That's sick. This oh, I, so I cool. love... I love what you did with the brick things, making it look... The, the, like, it, 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 it's... I think without it, it would still work, but because of the way that those bricks things are aligned in kind of an Escher-esque way, it really sells the effect that you don't see the mode at all. That yeah, is exactly. so cool. Um, and I'll, I'll now go into... Uh, let's see if uh, I can see the sloth bear doing something again. No, he's probably lying there. In the again. <laughs> Yeah, just lying there again. This is such a zoo moment. Like, <laughs> do something! <laughs> well, at least he's not just moving his head around aimlessly anymore. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, yeah, so let's go into uh, overhead mode. Because I want to talk about a few things. So first of all, there is a fence here. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm going to I'm gonna make this mode a little bit deeper. Yeah, but, I was gonna that's what I was gonna say. Um, like. But that's something that I still need to do because this is still the fence from the African uh, wild dog. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to make better my god, you guys make so much noise. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the thing that I wanna talk about is um I wanted to achieve the same effect that I had with the savannah, basically creating an area that feels like a much bigger area than it is. And with the savannah, um, that's easily possible because it's a wide open space. And essentially it's just like, it's, it's I find it much easier to hide borders here Yeah. because it's, it's just like, yeah, this is a one wide open space. You can make it slope down. Mm -hmm. um, and these animals need a lot of space. When it comes to the Asian area, that's not really the case. The animals that we have are don't need it that much. Um, so I decided to try to have the same effect by... Oh! God damn it, you were swinging! <laughs> <laughs> we saw uh, it. Everyone saw it. <laughs> you all saw it. Don't lie. <laughs> now I'm just going to get comments like, No, they didn't swing. <laughs> swinging. No. He's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just time again. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to achieve the same effect here, but that's less easy to do because there's... Um, this is also an Indian and a, it's an Asian jungle area uh, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you can't have these big wide open spaces. So how did I achieve it? Um, I achieved that by getting the um, ropes on top of this. Mm -hmm. which gives you the, again the idea that there's something more dragging dragging you along the way um, mm -hmm. and and it already brings you in but one of the things that i like the most about it is um it's a twist on borrowed landscape and and mix with um re reverse habitat immersion mm -hmm. um, because there's items that uh, are reoccurring in both the habitat and in the visitor areas like these little um and plateaus and indeed um which makes it feel like this is one big area that you are able to walk in completely you don't have the feeling that this is oh this is a small exhibit and the thing that behind it is a small exhibit and that the thing next to it is also mm -hmm. an exhibit yeah, everything is connected and you're yeah. part of it as well it, it it feels just like one big area where you can where you apparently can just walk in and um you can you can uh do so much in and that is 100 achieved by this reverse um immersion uh yeah, am I saying that correctly? Yes, I am, right? Yeah, reverse habitat immersion. Habitat immersion, yeah, by, by reusing items inside of the exhibit that are also used in the visitor areas. Um, and that creates the effect of this being like one huge area, um, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, I've gotten some comments by some friends who said that this was one of the coolest things they've seen. Um, and I was really, really happy about that. I mean, uh, uh, like, I, I have to agree, like, with Halo Park Zoo so far, you are really, your focus on, on the zoo design is super inspiring. 
and oh. like you're doing some really unique and awesome stuff here yeah and i think it's it's also because what of what you said like um oh, look look they're doing it now no, i can't <laughs> not yes. i can't say it. <laughs> um, it's, it's it's also because of something you said like you said yeah the zoo is more conceptual and i like that idea i like the idea of just okay let's just make a zoo from the perspective of making concept art and yeah. and focusing on getting that right will would all of this work in real life probably, probably not. not um although to be honest oh yeah no conceptually it would all work but then yeah. with, within like the more realism aspects you would bring into this the more yeah, yeah. for like budgets or stuff like that like yeah the one thing that i uh, that i kept in mind in terms of budget is um and which is another thing um is I try to layer the theming as much as possible, which means that there's one temple building here, mm -hmm. and all this stuff is rather simple. Mm -hmm. And then there's another building here, and there's another building here and there. Um, but the back sides of these are just going to be super simple. Yeah, yeah. and it's because it's a layered, um, a layered uh, exhibit. It it makes it feel like it's one big thing again, and, mm -hmm. and that I think in terms of budget might make it easier to pull off than if you would actually do all the buildings in this style exactly um so yeah that's what i've been working on for the future of this area there's two things that i really want to do i want to do a restaurant in this area because i think this is the place where a restaurant would work the, uh, the best especially because there's going to be a connection to the outside of the zoo, oh. which makes it much easier Wait, to bring in. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we are. Oh, we're near the entrance. We're very much near the entrance. So you've got the Asian area over here, and the African area will bring you right over there. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if the African area would draw me in sooner because it is much it, further out. Yeah, but I think once you've seen this, this. you want to go through there and then probably gonna go that way but it depends i guess human mind works in mysterious ways and uh walking routes are for are for uh dummies anyway uh walking routes are just there for the youtuber <laughs> who wants to make a logical video <laughs> exactly you just walk into the exit of an area instead of the actual entrance of it and you do it for years and then and then get called out by someone who visits the zoo for the first time. Anywho, uh, <laughs> I th I'm thinking of doing a, a restaurant near here, um, which would have views of the uh, rhinos, which I think is going to be uh, really good. And then that this area will slowly transition into the American area of the zoo. Um, <laughs> Americans and their power lines. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> the power lines. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the restaurant is here because then it has a quick connection to the outside world. It's much easier to bring in food than if you would have to bring it all the way back yeah. to uh, a certain yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so for Hella Park Zoo, what's going to happen is uh, for the foreseeable month, there will be St. Reginald on my channel. Um, if you want to know more about that, check just Goron's episode on his channel. So in the next month, there will be two uh, St. Reginald episodes. Depending on, on what happens with Wyatt's computer, again, check um, the episode on Goron's, uh, on Goron's channel. The, after that, there would be two Hallett Park Zoo episodes. Um, but I hope that if you enjoyed this, that you'll also check out the... Um, I was gonna... <gasps> Wait, what is this? And... Mm. <laughs> Wow, Frontier, you finally added realistic mating animations. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I was going to say there's a mud bath over here. Oh, okay. They, and they finally started using it, which is really, really cool. It's really anywho, wonky because of the Lianas, okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anywho, so Hella Park Zoo, if you want to see more of Hella Park Zoo, come back in a month. Um, but please also check out St. Reginald Zoo because I I'm going to do you. <laughs> some really cool stuff in there. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, Goron, thank you so much for being here. No and um, <laughs> thank you. And we'll see <laughs> you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.